What's up? This is RC Apologist coming at you. Um, been a while since I've done a live video in this format. They've actually fixed the whole thing with allowing the uh, cell phones to be used without having to do the whole verification. Is this for kids or not? Because uh, you know the whole law that passed that we got up on YouTube start making these announcements that it's uh, whether it's for kids or not. Um, but anyways, that being said, um, I want to go over something that I just got. We were celebrating Christmas, um, opening presents over at uh, one of my family's house. Because um, we, we got, we're one of those that celebrates different Christmases in different areas. Uh, so, you know, you got one side here of the family and then you got to go the other side of the family. So all that kind of stuff. So I was over at my dad's house, my stepmom's house. And there um we you know open gifts and everything um hey what's up seth o'neill <clears throat> uh so as i'm you know going through the gifts i see a lot of good stuff but there was one thing that i caught wind of that i noticed um and this like blew my mind <laughs> honestly when i saw it and just to give a clarification the thing here is says systematic theology. Um, what is systematic theology? Is essentially a work that goes into good detail, explaining it in a system of uh, the different aspects of Christian theology. Um, so, for example, the current one that I had, and it was up to date during the time I got it, was the systematic theology book by John M. Frame. Now, not every systematic theology book as it should be known is the same they'll go over the same issues but there's always their own blend of what they're focusing on in there and there's also a different language like for this one um i don't recommend always for the layman because he uses a lot of big philosophical language um because he is a bit of a philosopher as well as a theologian um and then there's wayne grudem's systematic theology book these two are the more popular ones and they're only one book but did i get uh one book well i'll tell you i did but it's not necessarily one book you see this this here is francis turretin's institutes of elenctic theology and it says here if you noticed volume one so what's that mean meaning this ain't just one and it's not just two. It is three whole volumes of Francis Turretin's Systematic Theology book that when I compare it side by side with the one by John Frame, uh, doesn't come into comparison because, well, it's taller uh, than that. But there it is, the three volume systematic theology book and i've said before in the apologetics uh presentation that i gave on uh, youtube that you're going that systematic theology is a good tool to use in studying apologetics because you need to learn your theology you need to learn what the bible teaches you need to learn your doctrines if you're going to defend the faith but what makes this interesting and what makes this unique compared to the other systematic theology books, besides the fact that it goes into being a multi-volume work, which you don't see that much these days. The only one that's really starting to do that now is the Reform Theology, Reform Systematic Theology book that Joel Beakey is working on. But in this, he even goes into things that honestly not a lot of people today are even asking or focusing on in the world of theology. But let's go over what each of these different... Uh, volumes covers for this one in volume one it covers the issue of the theology in general scripture the trinity divine decrees creation providence angels the original state of humanity sin and free will so those are topics in volume one now volume two the topics involve god's law the covenant of grace the person and state of christ the mediatorial office of christ Calling in faith, justification, and sanctification, and good works. And the third volume involves uh, the sacraments, the church, and the last things. 
So those are what these the systematic theology work contain in it. And not only that, those are just the general topics. For example, now what I mentioned that was unique about this is that there's also covering stuff that not a lot of people talk about these days. There's, for example, a form of theology that is called Molinism. And not a lot of people really dive into that in systematic theologies when they're trying to branch out and cover every single different group. As well as remember that when a systematic theology book is done, they usually focus on their specific theology and not try to interact or go into what other uh, theological positions state or affirm. But with this, what you'll get is um, in regards to the issues of decree or predestination, not only does he respond to the Roman Catholic Church and the Armenian Church's uh, views on this, but he also gives good examination and responses to Molinism compared to what other systematic theological books discuss, meaning he goes into it from the biblical perspective of going and giving his reasons why he affirms Molinism is wrong, and then there is the philosophical reasons, because along with being a theologian, he was a good philosopher in that regard. So he um, goes into it uh, quite well in his uh, work in examining Molinism and examining all these things. So uh, this three-volume work uh, from Francis Turretin, uh, I haven't had a chance to read, which is why the other, which is what the other thing was about it, um, that I mentioned. Sorry about that. If there was a cutout, there was a low battery percentage, so I got to charge this up later. But anyways, um, there, I've tried as hard as I can to find like, you know, because Francis Turretin, he is uh, like 17th century. And there is, as far as I can find, not really, um, a, an English version you can find online of this stuff. I believe the Latin, which is what he originally wrote it in, um, could be found um, online, but you won't be able to find an English translation for free to read compared to uh, the Institutes of the Christian Religion by Jean Calvin and various others. But with this, and I'm not going to say the price, but all I know is if you know if you ever shopped on Amazon and you know that you kind of know what the price is you're dealing with in trying to get um, the three volumes of uh, Francis Turretin's Institutes of Elenctic Theology. So ultimately what I would suggest is, you know, if you do have a way to invest in that, um, it's going to be worth it because, like I said, I haven't read it yet, but I know already from what I have looked into and sort of skim through the pages where he goes into detail, he is exhaustive. He goes into uh, every bit of detail that he can find um, on these questions and topics with um, looking into the biblical text to answer the questions of the certain theological positions that we have, and then to also give sort of a philosophical uh, thing, which I think is kind of missing from some aspects because a lot of people like to be definitely very biblical but are anti-philosophy and some people then get into philosophy while not having a regard well for the bible this however keeps it all balanced this however keeps it all together and this is why i think that this is a book <coughs> that's worth uh getting it's worth every penny to get so that being said uh, i just wanted to share this and i will definitely be using uh, this and my studies and in trying to learn more about theology is by reading um, in my opinion based off of what I have heard and what I've examined and so far even what I've just kind of skimmed through already that this is not only the most exhaustive and biggest but is probably one of the greatest systematic theology books that I have come across looking at in my life so that being said this has been RC Apologist. Y'all take care and Merry Christmas.